practice prepper. This is the emergency broadcast system. This is not a test. Unidentified aircraft have been confirmed in the skies over Los Angeles, Los Alamos, New York, Boston, and other locations. The origin of these aircraft is suspected to be extraterrestrial. The intention of these beings is unknown. Extreme caution is advised. This is not a test. Praxis Prepper and today I am prepping for the first episode of Alien Invasion. I'm going to be shooting it with my uh, actual cinematography equipment uh, mixed with a handheld camera that uh, is recording this right now. But I wanted to make the first episode have a nice cinematic feel so I'm going to use my actual gear. And I haven't used it in a long time. I, since I started being a single dad I, I just I haven't been a cinematographer. and. Um, it's like two years since I pulled out a lot of this stuff. This is a, a slider that is used for doing sliding dolly shots. And it's motorized. So I'm going to be using that during the opening to get some nice smooth slinking along shots. Uh, kind of just set the mood. I think it'll be really helpful. Um, What's going to be challenging is operating this at the same time as I'm on camera because I'm, uh, I was going to say I'm the talent, that's not me being boastful, that's what they call actors when you're working. It's like, oh, the, where is the talent? You know, we need the talent on, on set. Um, so I'm going to be doing both of those jobs and uh, it's going to be a little challenging to operate the camera and at the same time uh, be on camera. But, I have a little bit of help. I have a motorized uh, module for this. So hopefully that's going to allow the whole thing to work much more smoothly. Still, I only have so much track, so I'm going to have to keep jumping back and forth between operating and, and being on camera. Because you don't want to let this thing get to the end of the track because then the motor starts grinding. You know, I lent this out to someone and they put they put this thing back on here. I'm going to remove that because it hits. It keeps it from... Oh, no, we have a pad anyway. Okay. No, that's good. I don't need to... Yeah, they added that. When I stopped working, I, uh, I lent all my stuff to the company that I... that I work with because I, I felt bad about just disappearing suddenly. And... Uh, uh, stuff... I haven't touched it since they, they had it. All right. So what this thing does is... This will keep the camera pointed right at me, even though I'm not operating. So the way this worked, if I can recall, <laughs> is you aim. I think you you aim, and then you lock these down, and then yeah, it keeps it aimed on on point. Okay, so we got that. So this is the basic sliding mechanism. We're gonna be Rocking that, and then it's got all this electronic stuff that actually drives the whole thing. Normally I would clip these onto the, uh, the tripod, but I'm not going to do that today because I think I can just have them dangling around. Wow, it's been a long time since I set any of this stuff up, and I kind of forget how it works. This plate here holds the motors, and I've got different speed motors. And I think I'll just be using the slowest motor. Okay, so these pieces, I believe, come off, and then this goes in like that, yeah, like that, and that drives that, and I need to put something on there. <laughs> There's a gear, yeah, here's a gear. Okay, so the motor drives the gear, and the gear moves the, the head around. Now, I've got two motors. 500 series, and is this a 50 series or a 100 series? I believe the 
Ooh. I think the 100 series motor is the slower, quieter one. I think. I guess I can test that out. Uh, how does this work? It hooks on like that. God, it's been so long since I did any of this stuff. Alright. Yeah, so that. That goes on like that. And then there's some a couple of little bolts. This is great equipment. It is really nice stuff. It's nice to be working with it. I, I, I've missed really shooting nice material since I've had to stop my job. You know, again, to be, to be dad. Of course, being dad is rewarding and you only get, well, I'm choosing to only have one chance to do that in my life. <laughs> um, which I think is, is definitely plenty for me. And, uh, yeah, but I, 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 I kind of miss doing this stuff. All right, so I've got, I've got this. What is this thing? I think that's for like an intervalometer. One of the nice things about this is you can, uh, you can set this up with a still camera, and you can have it slowly move across a, a track and have the still camera pop off frames every once in a while. So you can get a uh, time lapse, so things are moving really fast, but the camera is just doing a nice, smooth run. That was a popular look a little while ago. I don't know if it still is popular. <laughs> but... Uh, Back when I was shooting, that was a popular look that a lot of people wanted. So we, we would do that a lot. Okay, got my tape all over here. I always keep gaff tape all over my gear because you're always wanting to secure something down. So I use this gaff to hold down. Nope, oh, don't want to go over that bolt though. Use that gaff to hold that just so there's some tension relief. Okay, and this plugs in here. There we go. Uh, and then we got the power supply and the, the computer. I got the power supply charging over here. And let's just get this hooked in. Uh, where's the power cable go? <laughs> uh, I kind of forget. Uh, okay, so this goes in here. This sends the data to the motor. And oh, I think this is it. Okay, so this runs from the battery into the computer. Okay, and the computer's on. My Kessler crane is now activated. Uh, now how do you, how did this work? Okay, now can it go? There we go. And then I hit that button, and it just keeps going. So now I'll be able to walk on the other side, and this will keep keep doing its thing. So that's that's all set. So let's bring it back. Oop, other way. Yeah, they set this up backwards. Uh, they put this this arm on the opposite side that I used to. So now when I I'm using this joystick, left is right and right is left. I'm sure I'll figure it out. Why? Right. Oh, I just got confused again. Okay, so that's all set. And I'm going to, does it have an off button? I forget. I don't think this has an off, you just unplug it. Okay, and the next thing I'm going to do is build my camera, which is my really nice camera that um, I don't use for practice pretty much ever. You've seen it a few times, uh, my, uh, my station welcome video, I shot that with this camera. But uh, I almost never bring it out. I like the homegrown kind of feel. Uh, I think it's... I don't know, it just seems more democratic, just like anyone can do these videos because, you know, you don't need to have a really expensive camera. All this gear together, I've got about $50,000 worth of production gear, but 98, 99% of all my practice videos are shot with a $200 camera, no exterior mics or anything like that, and a junky tripod that is falling apart and, like, only a couple of the legs on it work. I've got other good tripods, I just, I like the idea of working with garbage. Okay, so let's get this camera out, we'll get it mounted, we'll get going. Alright, so this is my camera bag. As you notice, I've got purple flowers all over it. I painted those on the bag myself uh, because I would travel with this bag a lot. And if you, if you were a crook, you know, someone who's looking to steal bags, I wanted to make this look like the last bag that you would want to steal. I tried to make it look like this is full of adult diapers or something, like an old lady's bag or something. So I don't know if I succeeded in that, but all the camera crews that I work with always found it kind of funny that I had purple flowers all over my, my camera bag. All right. 
So the camera that I'm going to be shooting with today is a, a Canon camera. It's a C300 camera. This was like the killer new thing five years ago or something like that. This, this thing right here cost me, I think like sixteen or $17,000, this right here. <laughs> I remember the, after the first shoot, I'm putting it back in the bag and I'm, I'm, I just look at it because I just spent the money on it and I was like, really? This costs as much as a car, <laughs> and, but you know, whatever. So, yeah, it's a really good camera though, even though it was really expensive. The only thing I think was kind of lame about it is that you couldn't shoot slow motion with it at a full 1080 HD. You can only do 720 slow motion. I'm like, for a $16,000 camera, I would expect you could be doing slow motion with it. Because, I mean, you can take a GoPro camera and shoot 1080 slow motion. So, I was a little miffed about that, but... <laughs> You know, everything else about it was super awesome. All right, you got to build this camera though. It doesn't doesn't pop right out of the the uh, bag ready to go. So, got to put the viewfinder module on the top. I never like this. You got these little cables with these tiny little wires that are just asking to get broken. So I'm always really gentle about how I seat those in there. But you know, I'm sure it'd be like thousands of dollars if I ever bent one of these wires. So, there we got that. Here's the viewfinder up there. Uh, cameras like this don't come with lenses, so <laughs> i got to choose a lens. I think I'm going to be starting... Hmm, I think I'm going to use a 35mm lens. This is a cropped chip camera, which means that a 35mm lens on this looks like a 50mm lens, or thereabouts, uh, on a full-frame camera. And uh, so, uh, a cropped... Crop sensor just means that it's sort of sort of zooming in a little bit on, on the image. So if you want something to look like you shot it with a 50 millimeter lens, you maybe shoot it with a 35. If you want it to look like a 35, you maybe use a 24 or something. So there's the lens. These are Rokinon lenses. These are great lenses that are comparatively really inexpensive. Like I think this 35 was it's maybe like $400, $500, dollars, something like that, which is really cheap for a really nice piece of glass like this. Um, you, you can spend tens of thousands of dollars on, on good, uh, really good lenses. I have a couple official Canon lenses. They're L-series lenses, which is like they're really good lenses. I don't know, maybe they even have a tier above that. But I have a couple uh, Canon L-series lenses. Uh, one in particular is a really long, a 135 millimeter lens, which is really, really nice. Um, and... Uh, Beautiful. It's beautiful. But I'm going to be shooting with a 35 today, I think. Uh, okay, so I got that. I got, and then I need a battery. Pop the battery in. I'm a little nervous about the shoot because this all my openings, I oftentimes will do like a comedy thing and I'm kind of acting in that. But I, this whole series is going to be me kind of role playing. I'm going to be playing myself, but I'm going to be, you know, role playing that there's aliens and, and such. Uh, and I'm a little apprehensive about that, if it's going to come off all right, because I'm not an actor. Uh, again, you know, I have a little practice with my openings and stuff like that, but uh, that's just holding, like, a gag for, you know, 30 seconds or a minute. Uh, it's a little different if you have to kind of hold a whole story arc. Um, I don't anticipate there's going to be a lot of character development <laughs> for me, uh, both because I'm not a trained actor, and also just my, my general personality is that, you know, everyone could be ecstatic, and I'm kind of here, and everyone could be like totally terrified and depressed, and I'm kind of here. I'm just kind of always the same. I guess now and then I get irritated with things, uh, but, uh, you know, there's not a lot of up and down in my personality to begin with, so uh, I'm going to be displaying that <laughs> on screen, uh, and uh, well, we'll see how it goes, but I'm a, I'm a little apprehensive about it, but I think that this, doing a story in this way is going to be a really fun and engaging way to share a lot of prepping ideas. And my, my plan is for every episode to have some kind of a, you know, building block of the alien storyline, of the aliens, you know, coming and invading. Uh, and also, very important, to have some sort of a prepping lesson or a prepping uh, demonstration or something like that, even if it's just sort of talking about how my preps are working out in relation to the situation that I'm facing. And, you know, oh, well, this ended up not working out as well, or, or this or that, you know, but just to get people's minds bubbling about, like, like yeah, you know, what if something did it? No, not aliens. You know? <laughs> I'm not really prepping for the aliens to drop the bird flu-infested clown zombies. Uh, but uh, 
but just get people's minds kind of bubbling about like, you know, yeah, like what if something actually did happen? You know, would I be ready? You know, I've, I've got all these kind of random preps that I've put together, but, you know, uh, am I really prepared for, you know, the rubber to meet the road, so to speak? So that's my goal, and I think this is going to be an entertaining way to do it. So I'm going to get this mounted and start shooting the first episode. Okay, so we're back over here now. I got the camera plate on the camera. Usually, I would have a key or something. Do I have a key in my pocket? Yeah, I got keys in my pocket to, uh, to lock the uh, camera plate on. You use a quarter, a screwdriver. I usually use a key. Lock it on there. And this slides right up in there and locks. Got to lock it in. And then it's ready to go. All right. So I'm going to start the episode. I want to take this opportunity to thank you guys that are watching this right now. I'm, this is a video I'm exclusively throwing up on Patreon. Uh, and I, I just want to say how much I really appreciate uh, everyone that has started supporting me on Patreon. Uh, when I first started this channel, I, I didn't really have any uh, sense that it would ever be something that I could make a living off of. And, Currently, that's still not the case. <laughs> Between Patreon and uh, the ad revenue, I think I get like 20 maybe $30 a month. So, uh, you know, given that I don't live in a third world country, <laughs> that's not enough to make ends meet. But, uh, but seeing some of the potential of maybe getting a little more ad revenue and maybe getting some support on Patreon has gotten me excited about the idea that maybe this is something that I could do as kind of a part-time job, and I would love to be able to put more effort into the channel, uh, and by that I, what I mean is more time, because I'm a, like I said, I'm a single dad. You know, I have to make enough money to you know get food on the table, uh, and I so far I've been squeezing this thing in as a hobby, and I really enjoy it. I love doing it, uh, but there's only so much time that I can devote to the channel because I also have to you know make ends meet, and you got to do your visual effects if you want to put food on the table. You know, uh, right now I'm doing uh, it's Halloween season, I'm doing a lot of stuff for for Halloween. Uh, you know, haunted houses and, and whatnot, but, uh, but I have to put the time in on, on that, and I would love to be able to put more time in on this channel and do more of this kind of creative stuff, so uh, that's why I started the Patreon channel. You know, we'll see how it goes. I really appreciate you guys for being the first out of the gate to, to give me some support. I'm hoping that there'll be some other people that will follow your lead, and if I can get enough support through Patreon, I'll be able to cut down on some of my other uh, work, some of my other projects, and really put more time in on the channel. I'd love to be able to do that because uh, I, I don't think I would want to be uh, releasing more. I like the idea of you know one thing a week, maybe with a mini here and there. But I uh, I would love to be able to up the production value of some of it uh, to make it a little bit more engaging, to make things a little bit more interesting, make things a little bit more fun. Um, I I want to do that for a couple of reasons. One is that you know, I appreciate your support and I want to create the most high quality content that I can for you that, you know, you find engaging and entertaining. But also, uh, the more the more entertaining, the more engaging that I can make this type of material, the more people that maybe aren't into prepping might be drawn to it and, and start thinking about these things. And I know there's a lot of uh, sort of elitism, uh, look, elitism in the prepping community where people are kind of like, oh, you know, those sheep, they're just going to, you know, they're going to die anyway. And, you know, if they don't want to help themselves, why should anyone care? Uh, okay, you know, I, I don't exactly sign on to that. You know, I kind of care about other people. And, you know, I at one point had no idea about this stuff. And I know there's other people that have grown up in a circumstance where, this just hasn't been put in front of them, you know, and you can't blame people for stuff that's not put in front of them. But in a more selfish way, selfish for me and selfish for you guys, it behooves all of us to get as many people into prepping as possible because it just makes the world a better, safer place when your neighbors and the people around you are more resilient. I did a video recently about, uh, you know, all these hurricanes and uh, how, you know, a bunch of old people died in some elderly home because the... Uh, you know, FEMA couldn't direct their efforts exclusively, exclusively at the people that really needed it because so many people needed help. And I think that uh, just as a, a mode of self-preservation, the more that you and I and other people can get as many people's, people as possible into prepping, it's better for us too because it just, it, 
creates less drain on resources whenever there are problems, and there's always problems. As much as people want to talk about how prepping's crazy and you know nothing's ever going to really happen, stuff's happening all the time. It's happening right now, right this minute. There's fires, there's floods, there's storms, there's people losing their jobs, even just simple things like that. You know, uh, people not prepping financially. I think the more resilient our society in general becomes, the better it is for all of us. So, so that's one of my other goals: is the the more we can make a more broad appeal to this type of thing, the better it is for everyone because, you know, we're all in the same boat together and, you know, for better or worse, when something goes bad for one person, that, that metastasizes out onto everybody else as well. So, so it's kind of a selfish motivation for helping people that I've come up with here. So I'm probably just trying to delay at this point. I'm a little nervous about starting this episode off, but I'm just going to get going with it. And uh, I really hope you enjoy the series when it starts off. It's going to start out slow, like the rest of my channel. It's, uh, you know, the trailer's really like, you know, yeah, this is, you know, this big, you know, you know <laughs> exciting thing. And there's going to be exciting mo moments in it, but I want to make the series feel like what it maybe would really feel like, which would be lots of periods of not knowing, lots of periods of maybe stuff not happening. Uh, yeah, I'm really selling the thing at this point. It's going to be boring. Nothing's going to be happening. It's not going to be like that, but uh, uh, I want it to feel like this thing is really unfolding. So that means there's not going to be shots that are going to be from a perspective that, you know, I as a character wouldn't see. It's all going to be from one person's perspective. And there are going to be periods, I think, in the alien thing, uh, in the alien story, when you're not seeing the aliens. You know, I'm going to try to keep that as, as, tight, as, as small as possible because I know the aliens are a draw. And it's exciting. And, you know, it's exciting for me, too. It's more fun for me to edit these things when there are, you know, aliens in it and, and whatnot. But, um, uh, but I also want to keep it real. Uh, and I think for someone... In my situation, I'm kind of out in the woods experiencing something like this. There'll be a lot of periods where you just don't know what the hell's going on. You know, you're not getting a lot of information coming in. You know, there's not a ship flying over your house every day. Uh, and it would kind of feel like that. And I, I want to I make the series kind of feel like that, too, while at the same time keeping it entertaining and keeping, like I said, those, those periods as small as possible so that we can keep the thing moving and keeping it exciting. So I hope you like it. I hope you enjoy it. Please give me feedback. I'm always open to feedback. I'm always listening for feedback. I have a general sense of where I want to see the story arc go, but I don't know. I, haven't, I don't have the whole thing scripted out. Uh, and uh, I'm always open to the idea that people are capable of having better ideas than my own. I, I also know that, I mean, there's a, a fair amount of, like, preference and taste, and just because one person says something doesn't mean you should do it because, you know, there's all sorts of right answers to something. So I, I'm not going to say, like, every single you know, piece of advice, I'm going to be like, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do that, because I'm sure a bunch of pieces of advice are going to conflict each other. But I will give really good... Uh, uh, solid consideration to anything that people suggest, and uh, hopefully, uh, you know, it, it'll help make the whole series even more be uh, more engaging and, and just better overall. So, I'm rambling, I don't want to start, but I should start. Again, thank you so much for your support, I really appreciate it. Uh, if others so follow suit, I'm going to continue this series as long as it feels like it's relevant and has things to share and things to tell. So, that's it. Thank you so much for your support. This is the emergency broadcast system. This is not a test. Unidentified aircraft have been confirmed in the skies over Los Angeles, Los Alamos, New York, Boston, and other locations. The origin of these aircraft is suspected to be extraterrestrial. The intention of these beings is unknown. Extreme caution is advised. This is not a test. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video.